Hi guys, give me one second. <laughs> Welcome back to Clutter Therapy. If this is your first time here, hello, my name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in Boston. And every week we get together to talk about home organization and decor issues and basically how to make your home a better all, a better all, <laughs> an overall better place to be. A lot of us are uh, at present in our, still in our homes right now, even though they have lifted some of the restrictions um, due to the pandemic. Uh, a lot of us are, at least I know that I am still staying safe at home um, because I, uh, I'm still a little bit afraid. So um, since we're spending a lot of time at home, we want to make our homes the best place it can be. And so every week to get together and talk about it. So um, this show uh, today is about organizing your kitchen and maximizing efficiency and storage in your kitchen. Um, we did do a specific pantry episode, but we're going to talk about general kitchen issues and go through some of my general best practices for kitchen stuff because I had been thinking um, over the past few years that I don't really have rules for organizing. You know, when I go into people's houses, I sort of try to figure out what works for them because I feel like rules, rules are very restrictive, but I do find that I have some best practices um, that work for most people. Not everybody, but work for most people. So let's go ahead and say hello in the chat. And um, I'm sorry, I pressed go live today without like pressing the, um, the, the wedding room button because I usually like to have a few minutes of, you know, so for people can come into the chat, they can grab their coffee or whatever, and I can grab actually my own coffee um, and stir and everything and then sort of sit here and get ready for the live. But instead I just pressed like go live and you saw my webcam and I was like, hold on. 
<laughs> so fun technical issues. I hope everybody is having a really good week and is getting through. It's hump day. So um, how is everyone doing? Yeah, I'm definitely staying at home. Um, Harriet says she's staying at home too. Um, and Erica says she's working from home permanently. That is amazing. I think working from home is so, I, I love it. I mean, I, I I do miss like being around a lot of people and talking to people and hanging out. But working from home to me works really well for us and our family. So um, I've been enjoying it. They did open up restaurants. You can eat outside in restaurants. And I think actually this week, maybe you can eat inside. But I just, going to be totally honest with you, I just don't feel ready it's just not, it, it's, I'm not ready. <laughs> but I'm in here and I'm eating all of my meals at home. So getting an organized kitchen is going to be very important for a lot of people. Hello, everybody in the chat. Hello, Brandon. Hello, Angela. Hello, Harriet. Hello, Terry. I've like missed a bunch of people, but hello. I hope you all are doing great. And, uh, oh, he's on his lunch break. Brandon, you, you turn in, tuned in just at the great amount of time. I am, I'm gonna take my lunch break right after this show is over. So, um, so today we're gonna talk about kitchens and kitchens are one of the most common uh, problems that I go to people's houses for when I was visiting people in person is to help me, you know, help organize and unpack kitchens. So I think kitchens are one of, well, kitchens personally are one of my favorite places to organize because I, I just, love it so much but they're one of the most difficult places to keep organized and have a system that works really well because it is the hub of the home at at any point of the day there's always somebody in there taking stuff out putting stuff in and it's very dynamic you're bringing new things in all the time you're bringing new food in you might buy new pots and pans you might break dishes you know it's a very dynamic space that everyone in your family is in at some point of the day it's not like you know a bedroom where like you know it's permanent it belongs to one or two people it is the hub of the home therefore making it one of the most difficult places to keep organized but I'm gonna bring you a few of my general organization tips and concepts for kitchens, and then I'll take your questions after my um, spiel is over. So I won't be looking directly at the chat um, during my my big spiel, except for you know a couple of moments. So if you could save any questions or um, general queries until um, the end, that would be great. I can address you then. So um, depending on your lifestyle and how much you're cooking and basically doing all your meal prep in your home is basically going to make the difference between how you organize your kitchen. I've found in my career that there are usually three things that you're doing in your kitchen. And I've sort of thought that those were like barred categories of storing like I guess storing categories. So at any point in your kitchen, you're either preparing food or making food, cooking food. This is all goes into the prep category. You are storing food or, you know, um, and that is the food storage category or you are cleaning up. <laughs> Usually you're not doing much else in the kitchen except, you know, if you work in the kitchen or just hanging out there, of course. Uh, but those are the three primary things that I find that people are doing in their kitchens and therefore need to set up organization and storage systems for these three things. So depending on the size of your kitchen and the makeup of your kitchen is, it, it really doesn't make a difference. Like I have, for example, um, and there's been a lot of talk um, architecturally over the past, ooh, I want to say like 80 years, that's the number I'm pulling out of my butt, about the kitchen, kitchen triangle. This is like a an architectural concept which believe, which says that you you know anything in your kitchen should not be within like four to nine feet I think away from one another like it, your refrigerator should be within nine feet of your stove and sink and all that thing because you're you're basically working around your stove sink and refrigerator that's what the concept was with the kitchen triangle however nowadays people are using much more uh, many many more tools than just their their sink their stove and their refrigerator, right? They may have a, um, a uh, what's that, the air fryer. They may have, you know, microwaves. A lot of us have microwaves that may be in a different point in our kitchen. <laughs> Sorry, the allergies are killing me this week. Anybody else? <laughs> the tree pollen is real. Um, so the kitchen triangle might not work for a lot of kitchens. However, it's a lot of architects still apply it and a lot of people still kind of believe in it. However, however your kitchen is set up is, it, it, I, f I feel like those three things, my own personal kitchen triangle, 
prep, food storage, and cleaning still applies. Um, you may have little points of different storage. So like if you're at your food storage, maybe in different par parts of your kitchen, but that still parts that still counts as food storage and you still need to treat it like a zone. So setting up all of these zones, it's really what's gonna help you organize your kitchen and keep a, a consistent system so that everybody knows where everything goes. <laughs> um, so currently you guys are in my kitchen. Well, you can see my kitchen behind me, but this is what it looked like this morning. <laughs> it's really messy. But as you can see, there's an island in the middle where the sink is in the middle. Um, the stove is right across from the sink and the refrigerator is off to the side. Now I have a little diagram that I drew of my own kitchen, but um, basically this is the way that I've set up my kitchen for maximum efficiency for me. So the orange area is where I do have my food storage because the refrigerator is, all, is obviously food storage, right? And right beside it I have a dedicated pantry, which I'm very excited about having. Um, beside that is the, the blue area, which is the prep area. And this is basically where I do all of my food preparation. I don't actually use my island a lot for pre food preparation. I mostly use this for cleaning. Um, and you can see my dishwasher is there too. So depending on how your kitchen, now, now I used to live in an apartment with a straight kitchen. This was actually uh, two apartments ago. And um, as you can see, it's, it's set up differently than my kitchen now. It's very, it's very straight. There's not a lot going on in terms of cabinet storage, um, but I still had a, a, a system for organizing and setting up systems. I had my food storage all in the cabinets, in the upper cabinets, and my prep areas were obviously the, the counter because I had no other prep areas. And my cleaning area was sort of integrated into the prep area. And I even had, this is my bachelorette pad, you guys. This is the smallest kitchen I've ever lived in in my entire life. As you can see, there is a apartment-sized refrigerator. This apartment was um, a little over 420 square feet, okay? So it's it was very tiny, but I loved it. It was my bachelorette pad, I loved it. There's a tiny size oven, and as you can see, a little very small sliver of counter. <laughs> which was, I guess, my intended prep area. And um, being somebody who liked to cook a lot, I had a lot of kitchen stuff coming into this apartment and it was really hard to set up systems to organize it. But as you can see, I added extra prep, an extra prep space by using that um, butcher block top uh, baker's rack, which is on the left-hand side, you can see there. That is something I added. Uh, it made my kitchen seem like a galley kitchen, but it added a very much needed storage. Um, and the sink, the 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 picture on the right is actually the other view of the kitchen from you know if you were standing at the entrance. It's a very tiny sink storage. Those drawers that you see below the, the sink are not real. Those were not real drawers. <laughs> they were just imaginary. Um, and off to the and what you can't see in this picture is that on both sides of the kitchen there was actually a bathroom and then on the other side there's a bedroom so it was very tiny um so i had set this up to have extra storage actually in my living room now this was my pantry that i had created in my living room from a uh, freestanding alpha and a uh, freestanding intermetro unit in my living room because i had no place else to have a pantry. I also used it sometimes as um, extra prep area. If I was making something, you know, really, really tasty, like I think I was making, I think I spent one afternoon, I remember in this apartment making uh, like comfort food, you know, I made like, uh, gr gr like greens and uh, mac and cheese and all that stuff. I made that <laughs> in that kitchen, even though it was really small, I was able to make extra storage. Now I was okay looking at this <laughs> in my living room every day and I was able to set, actually set up functional zones in my own kitchen because I created extra storage. So if you're, the, so the, I, I'm finding that the main, the main complaint that I find when I go into people's kitchens is they don't know how to get extra storage in their kitchen because they have all of this stuff that they wanna use but they don't know where to put it. So there are, there's a various, there's various amount of, 
ways to create extra storage. And if you've been watching my channel, you've probably seen a lot of these in my own kitchen. I'm gonna show a lot of pictures of my own kitchen actually. Um, and one of the ways to create extra storage, so we're gonna talk about upper cabinets first. Upper cabinets are something that a lot of kitchens have, <laughs> most kitchens have. Um, actually, I'm seeing a trend uh, in architecture that uh, get like eliminates upper cabinets and just has shelves. I think it looks really cool, uh, but you have to be really neat if you just have shelving and no upper cabinets because everything there has to be nice to look at and um, just very well organized. So that's a very bold move uh, for an architect, but I think it looks really cool. I'd like that if I could have it, but um, so the upper cabinets are often very shallow like between 11 and 12 inches but they're you know they're a good amount of depth to take up like a plate and a and, you know a larger bowl um, and a lot of people are, just have this space as a pantry so they have to utilize this space a lot so a, a really great way to get extra storage space in an upper cabinet is with a cabinet shelf this is um this is a cabinet shelf that they sell at container store i find them to be very strong they are uh, an epoxy coated steel i believe or maybe it's a vinyl coated steel um but they're they're very very strong and they create that extra vertical space and divide the piles so that you're not having to unpile piles of plates to get to the ones at the bottom you just have to you know make smaller piles and you can use these for cups you can use these for um bowls you can use these for anything they come in various sizes there are um less expensive ones that you can buy from bed bath and beyond and things like that just make sure that you go into the store and touch them because i find that that the less expensive ones tend to bow in the middle um so i really recommend before going to buy cabinet shelves in any store that you go and actually touch them and look at them and put your hand on the top and make sure it's not going to bow in the middle because that is something that's gonna cause you a lot of trouble in the future, <laughs> especially if it's one of those longer ones, right? The, the other way you can create a lot of space in upper cabinets is to use stackable modular containers for dry goods. This is the ultimate space hack because stackable containers and modular containers are gonna take up the least amount of space and get you the most amount of bang for your buck in terms of storing different things. Um, these little guys are um, for my rice and my, I think like grains, I have some panko in there too. Um, this, is, this is actually a picture from my old apartment because we don't have this much wild rice anymore. <laughs> but I find that the investment of buying modular stacking containers and you have to it's a big investment right you have because you have to buy you have to buy a set of them you can't just buy like one and then buy like another one later and then buy like i mean you can you can can start your collection but i really recommend that if you are going to make this investment that you buy these as a set um, because it's going to save you so much space in the long run i really really recommend like all the time modular containers because it's 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 just and plus the bugs don't get it <laughs> if you can find the ones that are are you know have a really good gasket these guys that i have in my cabinet have a pretty good gasket i haven't seen any bugs in these at all um, but pop canisters are pretty good and i know that click clack makes some really good ones as well and um i will be trying to update the description i know i have to update the description from last week um from my um clothing video i'm very behind on stuff i'm i apologize profusely so please forgive me um, but I will be a lot of these products are on my Amazon store if you're interested in looking at them I will be taking a look and making sure that I have updated that for you guys um, by the end of the week the next way to maximize space in upper cabinets of course is the good old turntable you guys the turntable is where it's at for like a lot of stuff I always recommend a turntable because I'm gonna say it again for like the 80,000th time it prevents the problem from things being in the back in the back and if as long as things are in the bottom or in the back you have an organization problem and you're never going to find whatever is in the bottom in the on the bottom or in the back so the turntable just basically prevents things from being in the back and you may look at this picture and you're like wow you have a lot of unused space yeah i do but i've never I've never lost <laughs> any bottles of oil. The thing about cabinets, you guys, is that you don't have to, well, in general, anything. My, for my, breath, my best practices for me and for my clients is that you do not have to fill every empty space, right? You can if you'd like to, but I encourage people 
to be okay with negative space. And that's really hard, especially if people are living in a small space or even if they, if the opposite, if they have the space and they wanna like fill it up with stuff, right? You don't have to, if you, if you don't have the things to fill it up with, be okay with negative space. Because that, in the long run, is going to save you a lot of agony if you just feel like you have to fill up the space. And this is something that is very common, I find. They're like, well, I want to I wanna use up every single centimeter or every single inch of space. Um, and you, before you have the temptation to do this, you just want to ask yourself why. If you've filled that cabinet with the things you need, and that's all you need, and you have some extra space in there, great. Just look at that space as potential. If you need to store extra space in there, you've got room. Um, but don't please don't feel the need to fill every space or to put something in every footprint in your home. Uh, I think negative space is going to create uh, less stress for you in the long run. Um, I know that in really small spaces, it's really hard to resist the urge to fill every space. But please uh, be OK with a little negative space if you have it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> So let's talk next about um, lower cabinets. So the challenge with upper cabinets was, I'm sorry to, for that the mirror keeps changing on my, on my view. The problem with upper cabinets is making most of the vertical space and being able to find things and having things not be in the back. There's this, a very similar problem with lower cabinets and that, but the, I find that the biggest problem in lower cabinets is that the depth of them creates a huge issue and you need to maximize accessibility, right? Um, because everybody knows that if you have that lower cabinet, and they're usually like 24 inches deep, like super deep, right? No one needs a cabinet that deep, ever. That you're gonna lose the stuff in the back. <laughs> so the, my, main, my main goal with under uh, the lower cabinets is to increase accessibility by either installing pull-out drawers, or if you live in a rental, you know I love my alpha freestanding drawer units, is to just put drawers that you can just place in the cabinet and when you move, you can, you can take them out of the cabinet and take them with you to your next space. That may involve you know removing the shelf temporarily, which is, I did in my old space actually. Um, but it just allows you to get at stuff in the back. And this applies to pots and pans, um, cutting boards, um, any any kind of thing. Because you, you want to store bigger, bulkier things in those lower cabinets. And don't get caught up in storing small things in there. Because in general, again, best practices, small things in shallower containers in a single layer, like, like roasting vegetables. Or, and bigger things in a, in a larger sized container or larger drawer with dividers, okay? Everything with dividers, right? <laughs> we want dividers on everything. Um, it just makes it easier for the eye, and we'll talk a little bit more about dividers in a second. Um, but what is this picture? Oh yeah, this is my pantry. <laughs> so my pantry is, um, it's, 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 it's a lower cabinet and an upper cabinet, right? Because it's got both things going on. In the upper cabinets, I, I just dealt with the depth by placing things towards the back of the cabinet and I kept the front of the cabinet sort of free. Um, but in the lower parts of the cabinets, I definitely installed pull-out shelves where I can actually roll them out. If you guys saw my pantry video, you know what I'm talking about. You can see them there. Um, and it just prevents anything from being stuck in the back. If something is in the back, you are going to lose it. I can guarantee you, or you're never going to use it at all. Um, because in order to get to the stuff in the back, you're gonna have to remove everything in the front. So, and I know that I am lazy and I'm never going to do that. <laughs> so sometimes uh, you really have to organize for your own behavior, right? Uh, so if you're the kind of person who every time is like, has no problem like removing stuff or playing um, Tetris in your own cabinet, that's fine. Uh, I personally am too lazy to do that. I would just want to like open the drawer, grab the thing in the back and close the drawer and walk away. <laughs> um, so the next area that I'd like to talk about is the under sink area. Um, is this a picture of the under sink area, Jed? Okay, this is my own under sink area and the under sink area is really tricky because you have to work with the plumbing that's in there and I find that I'll, the, the big problem with under sink areas that I find when I go to people's houses is that there is just, and I'm not the quantity police, right? I'm not. However, I do find that people are putting things under the sink that they really don't need or use. I feel like 
we have this culture, especially in America, of like the under sink area being like full of cleaners <laughs> and sponges and buckets and, um, you know, gloves and all kinds of stuff, like all kinds of specialty cleaners, like cleaners for the, the dishwasher, cleaners for the bathroom, cleaners for, you know, like, and I'm talking about different like cleaning fluids, right? I find that when I tell clients to reduce their number of cleaning items, but the, to multi-purpose them, like the same cleaner I use for the bathroom, um, I can use for my kitchen counters, right? I'm not gonna use the same sponge, but I'm gonna use the same cleaner. Um, because it's cleaner is it's generally, a, it's just a detergent, right? And then you know, sometimes you might wanna use an like, antibacterial cleaner or whatever. I do have a disinfectant, right? That I have made out of rubbing alcohol and essential oil and water. That acts as my disinfectant and then I clean. And I love to tell people to just reduce the amount of specialty cleaners they have under the sink because I, I do find a lot of the time that when I go there the stuff in the back again the stuff in the back is like the stuff they bought like 10 years ago and haven't used at all like the like the specialty um you know silver cleaner that they have never used <laughs> um so I just wanted to, I always t encourage people to just try and reduce that number of specialty cleaners under the sink because you'll they'll find that half the time well most of the time they can live without like half that stuff so working with um, the, the pipes under the sink is very difficult, um, but I find that they, they do make those specialty under, under cabinet um, shelf, like this little modular shelving that you can, you can fit it underneath and around the piping. I've used it in a couple of clients' homes. I thought I had a picture of that here. Um, I might have under sink too, is that it? Nope, that is me. Um, I don't have a picture of that, but um, or is this a picture? Nope, that's something else. <laughs> I don't, but I I that's I have a freestanding um, alpha drawer unit that I put in there right beside the the pipe the plumbing, and there is one that I've used in my bathroom under sink that goes around the plumbing that is very handy. It is in my Amazon store. I can guarantee you that. Um, but another way to maximize storage down there is, of course, is to use the back of the cabinet door to store items. As you can see, I've done here. I have put command hooks because y'all know, y'all know, I am the command hook queen. 3M, if you're there, I need, I, I want, I, I, will, I will endorse your product. <laughs> but I love command hooks because they can be easily removed. You can buy waterproof adhesive. Um, and it's great for storing like, little cleaning items, little light items. I don't want to stress my cabinet doors too much. Um, and also my dish cleaning gloves are there as well. So you can get a little extra storage space under the sink by using hooks and using the back of the doors because that small stuff is going to get lost. <laughs> it's going to get lost. And the last thing, of course, we're going to talk about, okay, and using turntables under the cabinet, uh, under the sink cabinet is also something I recommend. Um, but using a small enough <laughs> turntable is going to help you the most because uh, it's really hard to get around those pipes. Um, so usually a big giant one won't work unless you have a lot of room, but a small one can help, especially with all those little cleaners. Now let's talk about drawers. Just very briefly, you guys have seen my spice drawer. This is an old picture of my spice drawer. It doesn't look this neat and fabulous anymore, but I also, I just want to encourage you to put smaller items in your shallower drawers and to use drawer dividers. I know that drawer dividers are um, something that seems superfluous and like extra, <laughs> but I find that drawer dividers really help your eye find items because you can you have de definite divided piles of smaller items because the more smaller items you have in a drawer, the more your eye will be confused if you look at it without drawer dividers. And you can even get like the super cheapo drawer dividers from Dollar Tree. I don't care what you use, whatever it works for you. Or you can get like the nice fancy like bamboo ones. <laughs> I find that the bamboo ones are really fun um, and I made the investment like I think like a few years ago it might even they might even be like 10 years old those door dividers um, but I like made an investment when they were on sale like a few like 10 years ago and I love the way they look and um, I've been able to utilize them in at least four homes so uh, making the initial investment up front in you know quality organization items is always something I recommend because 
buying things from from um, affordable places um, and affordable items is really good if you don't need it to hold up um, or if you're not going to use it all the time. But if you, if it's an item that is doesn't have high durability, um, you're going to be just be buying that item again and then buying that item again and then buying that item again a few years later. So I'd rather make the initial investment up front and buy it one time and not have to replace it than replace it you know 12 or 10 times however longer um then let's talk about deep drawers for one second so again the this is <laughs> this is my kitchen again so as you can see the smaller items in the shallower drawer and the larger items in the deeper drawer again with drawer dividers um, the dividers again are really going to help your eye determine what you're looking for and keep groups of liked items together the other thing I really didn't talk about I'm, I'm all over the place you guys <laughs> is that you always especially when you're setting up your organized kitchen you're setting up systems in your kitchen you want to live with your kitchen for a little bit like let's say you just moved into, into a, a house um, you want to live there a little bit just unpack the kitchen that's what I always recommend if, if, if I can't be there right just unpack the kitchen just unpack the kitchen put things where you think that you'll use them for example, if you think that you're going to be preparing food and cutting food at a, one specific place on the counter, I know that I do this, and a lot of people do this too. They have a preferred space in their kitchen where they like to do things, right? You want to store your knives, your cutting boards, um, all the, your prep items in that area or, or near that area. And, you, and as a general rule, I like to recommend that you like to store your plates and cups somewhere near the dishwasher so that you can and we have ours stored right behind the dishwasher so that you open the dishwasher and turn around and unload them and put them right there that in the long run it saves maybe like five or ten seconds every time we put something away right but those five and ten seconds adds up throughout the day because i'm going to tell you right now the average american spends over 55 minutes a day looking for items that's like five minutes looking for their keys 10 minutes looking for a pair of shoes, you know, 15 minutes looking for their AirPods. And I understand because, you know, they're small. I'm, I'm very shocked I haven't lost them yet. I did lose the case one time, but I haven't lost the actual AirPods. Um, and, you know, three minutes looking for that dog toy. It adds up over time. And that's 55 minutes a day is a lot of time, a lot of time. So when you're saving yourself five or 10 seconds, um, in the kitchen at any point in your day the, that that time adds up to like more pleasure time you know in the evening or you know later throughout your day so um, I, I I have like one more thing to say oh I want to talk about what typically will derail a kitchen organization system um, and well, well, not keeping items where you use them is, is going to derail a kitchen organization system. Not dividing things accordingly um, is going to derail a kitchen organization system because you're going to be lifting things up and try to get to other things. Um, but the number one thing I find that derails kitchen organization is cluttering up counters. <laughs> I, have, I have very strong feelings about um, counter clutter. However, um, I have the strongest feelings about counter clutter when it comes to papers, newspaper, mail, things like that, that have nothing to do with cooking and eating. <laughs> um, so I find that when I go to people's houses, a lot of the problem is their kitchen counter is full of papers, newspapers, schoolwork, permission slips, <laughs> all kinds of things. And it it does it does two things right it clutters up the counter that is supposed to be used for preparing food and it is a slippery slope because as soon as you see other things from other rooms in that kitchen on that kitchen counter you start to put toys keys your purse you know video game controllers all kinds of stuff starts to accumulate there um you know brushes things like weird stuff ends up on the counter can't you know weird like matches all kinds of strange things because you've you've started incorporating non-kitchen stuff into your kitchen counter so kitchen counters i encourage people and i encourage everyone in the chat to keep them as clear as possible and to only have items there that you use every day or that you love right because i don't use my um kitchen aid mixer every day right 
I mean, I wish I did. But I kept that on the counter for a long time because I loved the way that it looked. It looked really cool. Um, but it, I was very selective and very purposeful in storing it on the kitchen counter as sort of a decor. And every now and again, I would use it to make cookies or whatever. But I encourage you to get papers and homework and stuff off the kitchen counter. If you feel like you need to keep it in the kitchen, and I know that a lot of kitchens have desks, right? That's something that was, I think that started in like the 80s or where people started uh, putting desks in kitchens. Like it's like a really separate, weird area where there's like a little desk and like a cabinet up above. Um, I would I would purposely put items there um, instead of putting them on the kitchen kitchen counter where you're supposed to have food. And plus, if you have papers on the kitchen counter and mail and stuff like at the kitchen counter, it's going to get like all messed up with food and oil. And I just want to reiterate at this point, again, to deal with your mail as it comes in every day, as soon as you walk in the door or now, as soon as you bring the mail in from outside, please don't wait um, because you, you're just making that pile of mail and creating that backlog of things to do um, and that I find that to be very stressful and for for a lot of clients this has turned into mail adding up over you know a week and then sometimes I'll go in and a client will have mail that they haven't looked at for five years and then we're going through boxes and boxes of mail so please look at your mail every day please deal with your mail daily as part of your daily habits um, and don't put it on the kitchen counters that's my only rule <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll still call it a best practice, right? Don't cut up, don't please don't clutter up your counters with, with paper. Um, it's just it's not practical. A lot of people ask me for like kitchen those kitchen like mail organization systems and how can they get control of that? And I just generally um, recommend that they change their behavior instead because I I just believe it causes much more problems than any solution I could come up with will solve for that client. So let me look in the, I think I'm done talking. <laughs> I think I'm done talking. And um, I wanna take some questions from the chat. Let's see what's going on. I haven't been looking at the chat very much. Um, so let's see. Everybody's talking about the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I do love the Dollar Tree, though, for for some stuff, you know, for stuff that I'm not really going to be using every day because, the, again, it's got some reduced durability because it's so inexpensive, right? Um, so I just want to make sure that it's stuff I'm needing to use either occasionally or stuff that's just for decoration, you know? Uh, yes, Container Store is expensive. <laughs> and I haven't been... I actually had... Um, I, uh, I I just yes or go pay uh, this is a good a good thing to recommend for people who um, are having trouble with paper is to go paperless um, especially concerning bills and things like that I don't see the point and I you know what I hate the most is getting a medical bill because I'm like why don't they just email me <laughs> I don't understand like I'm like just email me because then I have to open it up and like deal with it and like and then the next time I go to the doctor I can just give them my you know my my debit card and and pay for it I don't know um the the the, the onslaught of paper in 2020 is ridiculous <laughs> so but I find, I go to a lot of people's houses and I do find a lot of like homework on the counter permission slips on the counters um newspapers I find a lot actually my parents for a long time I don't want to like throw them under the bus but they had that separate little kitchen desk area and uh it got like overwhelmed with mail and magazines because my parents were doctors so they would get magazines sent to them all the time because I think they thought that their home was their office which it wasn't and um they just it just added up and it was it made me insane. Like when I would go to visit them, I'm like, I'd go and be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> why do you have so many like papers and stuff? Like I would be so overwhelmed by looking at it. Um, but eventually we got it cleaned up. It's so funny. Uh, Curly Girl says, just renovated our kitchen and I'm loving plates in a drawer. Me too. It's just something I just recently started doing since I moved in here because we have those deep drawers and it's, I am loving plates and, well, plate, we have our plates and bowls in a drawer, and it's fantastic. I it, it did take a while to get used to. For a while, I would just I would open the upper cabinet and be like, oh, there's no plates in there. 
<laughs> so, you know, old habits are really hard to break, I've found. And actually, because this kitchen is very similarly um, set up from our old kitchen, except the sink is in a different place, for the longest time, I think I just stopped doing this maybe like a month ago, for the longest time, I would go and I'd turn to get a, to take an empty plate to the place where my sink used to be in my old kitchen. <laughs> And it made me crazy. But now I think I finally got it in my head that the sink is in the island and that I don't have to turn around to, to get uh, clean and dirty dishes going on. Uh, Zola says she has a tiny kitchen um, uh, where they have a tiny kitchen just like my bachelor pad and struggle with cu- uh, with cupboard with overhead cupboard doors. I bang my head on them a lot. <laughs> Do you think sliding door cupboards are a good option for a narrow space? I think actually, if you're having trubs um, with the hitting your head on the, I, and I can relate, I did that when I was in that tiny kitchen all the time. I'd be like, oh, um, if you can, you can take the door off of the cabinet actually and have open cabinets if you are willing to organize the space enough to deal with an open cabinet look and if you if you rent the space you can definitely just put the cabinet hinges back on when you leave um but i found um that sliding sliding doors are are good too um i think they make some really beautiful um sliding cabinet door solutions um at ikea i believe or they have the ones that open like this (laughs) those are really cool too um but I would definitely, I would definitely check out IKEA for some, for some open, for open, for some upper cabinet solutions. They have really beautiful options for not a lot of dosh, which is amazing. Oh, people are talking about the mail. Fix it up and puts it away. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to side with COVID with my dinner. <laughs> that is hello world. That is so funny. Yeah, the mail is disgustingly dirty hello can we discuss it's been out it's been in people's hands right i don't want that stuff near like where i prepare food and all that stuff it's just it's too much for me i can't handle it i don't want to be having to like get my disinfectant out all the time it's just too much i can't handle it (laughs) um yeah that small that small tiny kitchen open cabinets i think my heart stopped I know it's it's kind of a scary it would be a scary thing to have an open cabinet in your kitchen right because then everything inside has to look nice Um, but I think if you develop a system I don't think it's a bad idea there was a trend going along in the I think what was it it's like it might have been 2015 for a while where open cabinets were like a really hot trend like people were taking cabinets doors off left and right (laughs) i still think it's a really cool look especially if you have like in my old bachelor pad i had just one or two and i have i think i had two i had two whole cabinets in that in that apartment i had one over that little like um counter area the counter it was like this small it was really small and then i had one over the refrigerator which i mean that's not a useful space right it was just where i put like the stuff i hardly ever used at all but um it i could have opened that i could have took taken the doors off and it would have been okay um and it, it and it opens up the the feel of the kitchen right because anytime you have something closed off it closes it, fe- it makes the room feel a little smaller as soon as you open up the cabinet um it can open up the, up the space a little more but you do have to be neat or you can um Actually, another solution is if you have, if it's just a single door, maybe replace them with two doors because then it won't be as deep, you know, because like it's kind of the same thing as like bifold doors, you know, like you have one door, you open it up, it's like this, but then you have two doors, it's less deep. Is that dumb? I don't know. <laughs> That's just what I thought. <laughs> That's just what I thought. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? Okay. I keep my recycling bins and shredder in the foyer um, so the mail doesn't even migrate. Like, very good. Yes. Yes, I say like deal. You gotta deal with the mail as soon as you walk in the door, um, or as soon as you can. As soon as you have like the mental wherewithal where you can. Because I know sometimes you walk in the door, you're like, I gotta go to the bathroom or like taking a nap or feed the dog or whatever. But as soon as you like humanly have the energy and wherewithal to deal with the mail, it usually is gonna take you five to ten minutes. 
go with your shredder, you know, put it in the recycling or deal with it, pay the bill, answer the question, take the survey or whatever. Um, it, it really doesn't take that long at all. Once you get into the daily habit of that, it, it, it will be much, it'd be much easier for you. I get a lot of my um, notifications and stuff electronically, so I actually don't get that much mail anymore, which is amazing. So the, the other way to solve that problem is to reduce the amount of mail that you're actually receiving. The only thing I still get is like spam from like car insurance companies, which is so annoying. Um, I really have to get on that and say, stop sending me your Geico things. It's so awful. Yeah, the the revolution. It's a the shredder by the mail station was revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you walk in the door, especially having the shredder like right there, or if you can have the shredder any place where you can easily access it, and that you know, and that's another thing that I like to tell tell people is when they are organizing or coming up with solutions, is make it something you can easily maintain or make it easy for you because if you're going to deliberately make it hard for yourself or organize the space for the person you want to be right if you want to be the kind of person that takes your stuff to the office and the desk with the shredder and you know but that's not you that system is not going to work for you okay so make make sure that when you set up an organizing system that it's something that you will realistically be able to maintain right because you know who you are we all know who we are. <laughs> I know I, I can tell myself about myself for days. I'm like, I know I'm a procrastinator. I know that I'm probably not going to want to create extra steps for myself in terms of organizing things, which is why I struggle, but I've gotten used to. I've struggled with the, the coat closet because <laughs> we don't have an entryway in our, in our apartment, right? Um, which is a bad, it's a flawed architectural design. We just don't have an entryway. There's nowhere to put a drop zone, um, and it's it's behind a door. I had to get past the hurdle of having to open the door every time I came into the apartment and do stuff in there. Um, but if I had my choice, I would have the drop zone right out right out front where I wouldn't have to open a door because I don't like to do that. That's an extra step I'm not willing to do all the time. Um, but it, I mean, if you have to adjust, that's really difficult. <laughs> and, and I mean, it can be done, but try to organize for the person you actually are not the person you want to be long story short uh, back to the chat <gasps> everyone's talking about clutterbug show tonight i'm very excited for her so um one of my co i'm gonna call her a colleague one of my colleagues here because she's commented on my channel a few times uh cass uh from the youtube channel clutterbug i think she's got like 300,000 subscribers or maybe more than that um, she has a show on HGTV that is premiering tonight called Hot Mess House, or if you're Canadian, you say Hot Mess House. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a great time. Cass is a fantastic, fantastic organization channel. If you're not subscribed to her, her channel is called Clutter, Clutterbug. She's very good. She's written, I think, two books. Not really sure how many books. Um, but she's wonderful. So please tune into her show tonight. I'm very, I'm so looking forward to her and cheering her on. I think it's really fantastic that, um, I, I think it's really fantastic that the, the platform of YouTube has given so many people so many wonderful opportunities that they wouldn't get otherwise. And I think YouTube is a fantastic tool if used wisely. Um, and I'm just so happy for her. I can't wait to watch it. I like... I love HGTV. You guys know I love HGTV. I have like a HGTV problem because I remember when um, I just discovered that it was on Hulu, you know, I like, I binged watched um, Love It or List It, like the whole thing, binge watched it, like just all straight through for like days. I was like, I'm just going to watch all the shows. And I was obsessed. So HGTV is very bingeable TV for people who are obsessed with house stuff. <laughs> Um, hello, Carmen. Don't worry. I we you can go back and watch the replay. <laughs> I hope you're doing great. And hello, Carla. How are you? My day is going okay. And yes, Cass is adorable from Clutterbug. She's adorable. Um, Jackie's asking, have I considered removing one of the pantry doors and replacing it with a shorter version? You could use the resulting top shelves as a drop zone. Um. I have not thought of that, uh, but that would require going behind the refrigerator. <laughs> so 
I don't know if that would work for me. It would take away our precious uh, food storage because we, we have a lot of food for some reason. <laughs> we have so much more food like uh, during the pandemic than we ever had because we're eating all of our meals here. We were talking about this yesterday. We're like, why are we eating, going through so much food? And I'm like, because we're, we're eating in three times a day as opposed to eating in our house just once a day, right? We would eat breakfast and lunch maybe in a different place. Like he would eat it at work. I might eat it like out, um, but now we're eating all of our meals here. It's just, we go through so much food. Um, tips for organizing kitchen cleaning supplies. Using office organizers. Wait, I can't read that. <laughs> Using office organizers work really well. Um, it depends on what the cleaning supplies are. Um, I happen to, I, 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 again, I, I always want to encourage people to reduce the number of cleaning um, formulas <laughs> that you have. Um, I've, I've, I've been trying to actually go through mine, just been trying to go through them and not repurchase them um, and use a general detergent to do most of the cleaning in my home. Um, I do keep a couple of ones around that like make me happy. Can, and you guys know what I'm talking about, like the, some of those Mrs. Myers cleaners that smell really good. If, that, if that's something that makes you happy, I'm not the quantity police, but I just want to make sure that people have room for stuff. Um, so storing cleaning supplies, I have, um, I have cleaning supplies in two locations mainly. I have some, because I have a utility closet, right, that has extra cleaning supplies for general cleaning and then the kitchen cleaning supplies are exclusively at the, the under the sink um, and they are in the alpha drawer unit actually so I can show them to you I can show you ag again I think where did that is that here I'm a hot mess today you guys <laughs> yeah so this is my under sink cabinet so basically I have some of my cleaners in a bin. Those are the ones I grab for all the time and some specialty cleaners and stuff. I had the stuff that I use um, not a lot are in the lower drawer and my sponges and all that stuff are in the upper drawer. So I try to keep the cleaning supplies to the minimum. And if anybody is interested in what that thing is to the right of the dish tabs, that is a container for um, like bacon fat. <laughs> and other kinds of fat that I don't want to put down my sink. Like basically fat that's like a solid at room temperature. I don't want to put down my sink. So I put that in, it's called a fat trapper. <laughs> it just contains a little um, aluminum bag or a, a bag that you can just then put in the trash. And it is um, keeps your pipes from getting all messed up. <laughs> so I don't know if that answered your question or not. Have I watched Sarah Richardson on HGTV? I have not watched, I have not watched her yet. I should, I should. I haven't actually been watching a lot of HGTV as of lately. My, my, my quarantine um, binge show, to be totally honest with you, has been 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> and every subsidiary show that stems from 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> I've just been binging 90 Day Fiance and like 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days and like what now? And um, I think I've watched them all. I even, I even watched their stupid quarantine show where they like sent cameras to people or like just, it was like people's iPhone footage. I don't know why it was, it was very interesting to me. Um, my husband and I actually have been watching it together and because we love to watch Dr. Kirk Honda who is the the relationship therapist talk about episodes we are we're we're in the system now <laughs> cuz we'll watch the episode and we're like I oh, wonder what Dr. Kirk Honda has to say and then we'll turn into tune into his and we'll watch it and we're we're all over the place um Oh, you need some declutter motivation motivation for under sink. Well, I have a video. I have actually a few videos of me um, doing the, the under sink organization in various homes and stuff. Um, I, I pick, a, pick a time when you have um, very little distractions and uh, put some happy music on because under sink area actually is very, it's quite tedious because you'll probably find a mess under there as well. <laughs> um, but I, I, don't, I don't know how to tell you to get motivated. Watch, watch a couple of my old ones. They're, it, they're, I think they're entertaining. 
<laughs> I'm all over the place. Have I seen Married at First Sight? I have seen Married at First Sight. I watched the first season of Married at First Sight and I thought it was really weird, but I liked it. <laughs> I thought it was really strange. Um, I also was watching the other one that's on Netflix. What's it called? It's called Love is Blind. And I got through like four three or four episodes of it but I just kind of lost interest but I want to pick it back up and see it again I love a good trash tv show I do <laughs> I do <laughs> but I go through phases you know sometimes like it's just like what I'm doing during quarantine I mean mostly during quarantine I'm playing Animal Crossing let's be honest like mostly and I haven't gotten tired of it too like I can fill like three hours a day with Animal Crossing I don't know wow. I don't know wow. I don't know how. Wow. I have a little sound that says wow. Here we go. Oh, did it work? Did it not work? I'm so upset. Anyway, I have a little sound effect that's like wow. <laughs> Does it work here? Wow. <laughs> but I've also been um, watching uh, like movies, old movies that I love. Um, I, re I most recently um, have started watching. Um, uh, I love those old um, early AIDS epidemic movies like um, And the Band Played On. That's one of my favorite films of all time. It's so great. It's star studded. It's fantastic. I just watched that a couple days ago again for like the 80th time. Um, I love Angels in America because I actually saw Angels in America on stage with my parents, which was really awkward because there's like n there's some nudity and like really sensitive stuff. I was a teenager, um, but, they but they took me to see Angels in America, which is a six hour play, if you don't know anything about it. It's a six hour play about um, the early AIDS epidemic and, and it has Roy Cohn as one of its um, characters, but Roy Cohn's a real person who actually died of AIDS. Um, and as it's, you know, the villain, it's a really great play. Um, but uh, HBO did an adaptation, I think, uh, how many years ago was it? I think it was from like 2006 or something like that. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It doesn't lose, I mean, it lost a little bit of its stage stuff because the, 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 the play, the, the special effects are kind of made to look, you know, stagey. They're not, it's not like special, special effects in the movie stayed true to some of that. Um, but it was a really fantastic, uh, I mean, it's going to be six hours of watching, but it's real good. It's real good. Um, so Shortenair says she hardly has to watch TV anymore. I prefer YouTube. Yeah, I watch a lot of YouTube too. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on in YouTube right now, like in terms of like the drama. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Brianna says she cl uh, clean out my fridge after that video completely updated uh, and store produce and it's great. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, the refrigerator, again, is one of those really dynamic spaces that is hard to keep clean and organized it is a ongoing battle you guys an ongoing battle but trust me <laughs> it's worth the initial investment worth the initial investment i actually found and i'm very upset and we're going off to off topic now um in our new refrigerator something has spilled underneath the bottom shelf the glass on the bottom shelf and in order to get it off, I think that I have to go through some really complicated procedure. And I just want to clean the bottom of the glass, right? I just want to clean the shelf, but oh my gosh. Like, yeah, I can't just slide it off like I could in my old fridge. I have to like take it off and like maneuver it. And oh, I'm mad. <laughs> I am mad. Oh, I, every piece, people are telling me to keep watching Love is Blind. All right, I'll, I'll follow up on it. It gets better. Okay. Yeah, I really, I think I got like three episodes in and I was like, I can't. Oh, the YouTube drama. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it would, I fully don't understand it. <laughs> the YouTube drama that's going on right now, but it's like the beauty. It's like the, all the beauty drama that's going on right now. There's a lot. There's a lot. It's the big, it's all the big players. I don't know what's happening, but it's like, Wow. A lot of the beauty drama is cr going on. It's crazy right now. Um, Erica says, that just happened here with duck juices. Oh, oh, duck juices. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the worst. I hope that you were able to get your shelf clean because I, I don't know what kind of juices fell underneath. I'm thinking it's like some produce juices, 
Oh, the Micah Stauffer stuff is really bad. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, but I, the bottom of the fridge thing, I'm, I'm beside myself. Yesterday I was like Googling, trying to figure it out. And I know that like there's at least two other people <laughs> on the internet that have problems with it. Cause I was like Googling my specific model of fridge, you know? Um, and they were like, how do you get the glass off to clean it? And I was like, oh, it's not just me at least, you know? Yeah, hello world. The, the drama on YouTube, it's a lot. Yeah, the beauty drama. You know what? I just am, I'm just an observer, right? I'm just sitting here with my popcorn, like going like this, but wow. I mean, <laughs> I am so glad that I don't have to deal with any of that stuff. So <laughs> that's why I'm not a beauty YouTuber. But I'm bum. <laughs> Definitely not a beauty YouTuber. Okay, you guys, I think that I get enough trauma with the raccoons in my yard. <laughs> I think that we will um, call it a day with today's kitchen organization video. I hope that it gave you some or from some inspiration and some ideas how to set up some systems for your own home or apartment or wherever you live because it can be a very tricky area to organize. But once you get a system going, once you get your zones figured out, then it's gonna be very helpful. Um, if you have any questions and you're watching the replay, just put them down in the description. Um, you can't put them down in the description. Put them down in the comments. <laughs> I will try to update my description um, in a timely manner. I know that I'm way behind. I am so sorry, you guys. Just stuff is happening. <laughs> And I just, I'm kind of a hot mess, but please be patient with me. Um, and next week, I think uh, we will do a free for all. So you can still submit your problems, videos, and places. I don't have any, um, I didn't have any submissions last week for clutter therapy. So any problems that you have in your home um, that you had need problems with, please send me a video or a photo, um, fill out the form that's below in the description and we can talk about it next week. Uh, so next week is a Q&A free for all, no specific place in your home. We're gonna go crazy. All right, so I hope you guys are having a great, where's the bean? I don't know where bean is, let's see what, I think I can find him for you guys before I go. Let's see, oh, there he is. Hold on. I woke him up and he's mad. <laughs> look how look how tired he a poor guy. I woke him up. <laughs> we took him for a very short walk today, but he got to to do some chasing um, during during that, and he's exhausted. Look how tired you guys. Aw, you're a lucky boy. <laughs> Are you sleepy? I'm sorry. Oh, that was a big burp. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, he's super tired. He is really, really sleepy, you guys. So we always want to, I, I feel bad that I don't bring Clover out for you guys. You need a bath, <laughs> but I'll, I'll let you take a nap first. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a great week and um, I'm excited to see you next week for a free for all. So have a good rest of your week, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me.